Welcome to Mark Arnold's Finance. I have a terrific video for you guys today. I have two very popular stocks that I will be comparing against each other and picking a winner in the end in which one I would prefer to invest in. These are both on my watch list and they have been for quite some time. In fact, both these stocks are very popular on a channel called The Joseph Carlson Show. I like to give him a shout out because it's a great uh, channel if you're interested. But he has recently become interested in Ally Financial, which I've been interested for over two years now, so way before he brought it up. But he did bring Costco to my attention, and that's why that one's on my watch list. They're both uh, excellent companies to look into and consider, and that's what we're going to do today. So if you're watching, I really want to say thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you to all those that are subscribed, all my recent subscribers. And if you're new, uh, give it a shot. You know, subscribe to my channel. I'm somebody that's very transparent. I'm around for the long term and I'm just growing the quality of my channel and you know the expertise that I have. And so let's get started with that transparency. Every video I'm gonna share my portfolio performance, whether it's good or bad. So we're gonna start with that right now. Now my portfolio. Last time I showed this to you, it was in the green about 1%. Now it went down about 1%. I've been flirting with the red and the green over the last like month. So what I would say, if you want, pause this video right now, look at all these companies I have, which ones are in the green heavily and the red heavily. Uh, be sure to just look at this if you'd like. And it's something I show with every video and with certain videos, I go a little bit more in depth, obviously. But this one, I wanna get right into the video that we have in front of us, which is comparing, you know, obviously my thumbnail shared it and I said it, but Ally Financial and Costco or Costco Wholesale. Now these two companies attract investors for two reasons, and that's what we're gonna look at and see which one is the better opportunity right now, the better investment for the long term, all that good stuff. So we're gonna be comparing a lot and putting these two up against each other. So we're gonna start with the first stock, and that is gonna be Ally Financial. Now Ally is a digital financial services company, and it has four sectors that it works in. It has auto, insurance, mortgage, and corporate services. It also does commercial banking. And full disclosure and transparency, I use Ally Financial. It's a great company so far. Their customer service has been outstanding, and I believe it's 24-7. So you can also do investing services, investment services, and personal loans. So they do a lot, and it is a bank. They're FDIC insured. So be sure if you have online banks out there to make sure they're FDI insured because there's a lot that are not. But Ally Bank, it's a legit bank. Ally Financial, it's a great company. Now it has no physical branches, which is interesting, but I think that's a great model because that's where I think we're all moving towards. I don't ever go into a physical bank anymore. I do it all online and I think that saves them a lot of expenses. So let's dive into this comparison and with Ally Bank, we're gonna start with their stock chart. Now their stock chart, you know, it's not bad, but I wouldn't say, you know, it's very impressive over the last five years. It's grown almost 60%. It's had a recent downtrend. I think a lot of stocks have in this market since the beginning of 2022. So uh, nothing red flag there for me. If we move on to its revenue and earnings per share, uh, we'll see that it's earnings per share. It's kind of a little bit all over the place. So if we compare quarter to the last quarter, it's down 11.85%. If we look at their trailing 12 months EPS growth, um, you know, it's at a 36.71% growth, but in that second column, you'll see the industry average is 123, so they're trailing that. But then the last five years, they're at 29.76% growth, and the industry average is below that at a 19%. So they're a little bit all over the place, but their revenue isn't as great. Their trailing 12 months revenue is 0.33%, versus the industry's 18.13, and their last five years of revenue growth is 1.72 versus the industry's 5.8. Uh, so not the best with the revenue. Now their cash flow growth rate, which I think is super important, it's at a 5.1%, where the industry is at a 13.85%. So that's not really a positive thing for me. Uh, so we're gonna keep that in mind. Cash flow is important to me, and this one is not really showing uh, to be that impressive. So if we move on to the financial overview is what I like to call it, we will see that Ally Financial, their debt to assets is a 91.6%. Now this is not alarming. I did a video recently comparing Bank of America to JP Morgan. Most banks or financial institutions 
are going to have a lot of debt. That's just how they run. Both those other companies were in the 90%, 90 percentile as well, so it's not a red flag. If we move down to that profit margin, I would say it's healthy at a 46.83%. Anything above a 50% to me is really impressive, so I would say that this is good and solid. Um, if we move on to their cash, of course we saw their cash growth, but if we look at it a little bit more in detail, you know, we saw that it was trailing the industry, and we will see here that quarter over quarter, it just goes down, 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 and down. So I don't like that trend, obviously. And if we look at their debt, the other, the other side of it, we will see here that their debt overall has kind of been somewhat flat, but has ticked up in the most recent quarter from last quarter. Uh, so I think that's kind of a reason why the stock might be going down as well. If we look at their P.E. ratio, this is something a lot of investors look at. Uh, we will see that their trailing 12 months P.E. ratio is at a 4.36% versus the industry average of 6.63. Their P.E. 5-year average is at a 9.08 versus the industry industry's 15.58. If we move down to that price per cash flow trailing 12 months, it's at a 3.21 versus the industry's 7.62. So what we see here, the picture of the story is they're cheaper than the industry average. And so that's, I think, why a lot of investors are getting interested in Ally Financial because it is uh, pretty cheap compared to other similar companies and compared to its history. So if we look at the dividend, the almighty dividend, Ally does shine here. Their dividend yield is at a 3.45% versus the industry's 2.87% and their payout ratio is a very low 15%. I don't see too many companies uh, that low with that high of a dividend yield, so that's really impressive. Plus, they've had a lot of decent growth, and I can see why. They have room to grow that dividend. So on that chart on the very right, that blue line is Ally, and the gray line is the market in general. If we look at their dividend history, the, kind of their dividend growth history, we will see that the growth over the last year is an impressive 57.89%. And as we saw with their low payout ratio, they can afford to do that. Now their last five years is still very impressive, at growing their dividend at a 30.26%. Now above, just to explain, the green line is their stock price, uh, the blue is their paid dividends uh, each quarter, and so this just shows you that it might be a good time to buy in uh, considering this dividend. So very impressive. Now, does this company do stock buybacks? Yes, it does. We'll see here, it's been trending downward this year, but it does do stock buybacks, which I love, because quickly, if let's say a company issues 100 shares, you own five, but then they issue another 1,000, you own less of that company. And so when they buy back those shares and reduce that count, that's good for us. We own more. And so I like to see when companies do stock buybacks. If we look at their fundamental analysis, we will see that Ally is considered highly undervalued. And as we saw compared to the sector, they are, they're cheap. The quality is rated at a 70 out of 100, so it's towards the high end, and the growth stability is right in the middle at a 50. The financial health is uh, more towards the high end at a 64, so overall, this looks good to me. Now, if we move to what the analysts score it overall, we will see here that Ally is rated at a 5.6 out of 10, so it's kind of neutral, not really bullish or bearish, it's just right there in the middle. Uh, so, you know, to wrap Ally Financial up, you know, this company, you gotta keep in mind too, I gotta say this, they are heavily in the auto loans, which to me is risky. And I think a lot of the market's looking at that and why this stock is so cheap, because they have, they're very much into that auto loan sector they have a big chunk of that of their business so that's something to consider so because their stock price is right now is between 33 to 35 dollars per share where i would like to see it go where i would start buying is under 30 dollars in fact if it fell to 28 that would really uh, incentivize me to buy and give me a level of safety so ally financial uh we're going to compare against costco at the very end so stay tuned but let's dive into the second stock let's look at costco of course, this is a membership warehouses, uh, warehouse company, which is basically shopping. You have grocery, you have clothing, you have household goods. There's a lot that you can go buy at Costco, and they have a great business model. Uh, you know, they're definitely a subscription-based uh, business model where member you have to be a member, and that provides and produces dependable, reoccurring revenue, which is great. 
and they have a high retention rate with those memberships. So that's something to keep in mind because that shows that this company is of high quality. People are willing to stay. So if we dive right in, let's start by looking at their stock chart. Now Costco looks a lot better than Ally over the last five years as they have grown 226%. That is impressive. Of course, they have fallen with the stock market since the beginning of 2022, but they remain on a really healthy uptrend over the last five years. And that's what I like to see with a stock that shows its quality. If we look at its revenue and earnings per share, we will see that Costco you know, they do fairly well. They're kind of a little bit all over the place, but with their earnings per share trailing 12 months versus the prior, they're at a 19.36% growth versus the industry's 29.87, so they fall behind there. But over the last five years with their EPS growth, they're at a 16.16% growth versus the industry's 8.38, so pretty much double that. Now their revenue, they're impress this is impressive. Their revenue percentage over uh, growth over the last trailing 12 months has grown 16.56% versus the industry's 11.62%. Over the last five years, they're almost double at a 10.54% growth versus the industry's 5.97%. And then that cash flow, the thing that I really like to look at, their cash flow growth rate over the last five years is 13.49%, almost double what the industry average is at a 6.59%. So that is a huge thumbs up for me. I really like to see that. Now, if we look at Costco's uh, financials, the overview, their debt to assets is actually surprisingly high. I thought that it would be lower, but it's at a 67.9%. I will say that this is not a red flag to me, and here's why. It is very expensive to build out these membership warehouses and they are expanding every year, building uh, you know, tens of these buildings that are massive and it creates a lot of expenses. So this makes sense. They're also trying to grow globally. And so I bet you that they're just having to take out some debt to do that. But that's okay with me because it's, this is not at a red flag level. Uh, this is acceptable and explainable because they are expanding, they are growing. Now their profit margin, this is interesting. I have not seen a company's profit margin this low uh, of this quality at a 12.7%, but this is not a red flag and let me explain why. This company is all about saving consumers money and here's where the proof is. They're okay with not having a high profit margin, right? They're okay uh, passing on savings to the customer and I believe that's why Costco is so successful. So to me, actually, this is kind of a good thing where it wouldn't be with other companies because this is putting you know, their money where their mouths are. And this is proving that, hey, we're saving our customers money. And I know, you know I do have a membership and I go shopping once or twice a month and you can save a lot of money there. Things are so much cheaper than anywhere else and it's fantastic. So I do like to see that. Now, if we look at their cash, we will see that Costco overall is you know, kind of, it's kind of level uh, you know, they kind of went down a little bit this last quarter in their cash, but it's still good cash flow generating each quarter. And I expect that, you know, as they build out and mature, this cash will just continue to grow. And this is quarter over quarter. So I bet if we looked at year over year, it'd be a different story. Um, if we look at their debt, though, we will see here that it is downtrending. So that's fantastic. I do love to see that because, like I said, it was surprising to me, surprising to me how much their debt to assets, how high it was. So this is great and kind of helps cool that off for me, any kind of concerns. If we move on to their PE ratio, we will see here that Costco, they are expensive. Their trailing 12 months is a 39.49 versus the industry's 23.07. Their last five years is a 34.45 versus the industry's 29.35. Their price to cash flows, uh, trailing 12 months is expensive at 29.57 versus the 17.21. And I highlighted in yellow under that third column, kind of showing you that they're at, they're at the high end of all these percentile measurements. And that's just saying that this is an expensive company. If you buy Costco, you're buying it at a premium. And that's something that, uh, you know, I think certain companies like Costco and Microsoft are always going to be, you know, high, more highly valued and expensive uh, than the market in general. But if you look at their chart, look how much they grew over the last five years. And I bet you all those five years, this company, uh, had a similar story to what it does now and, and you know that can create some people to say I'm not going to invest but that's that shouldn't be your main reason because 
they are of quality and they should, you know, if you look at their growth future, that's something to consider. And I think Costco has a great bright future. And so even though they're expensive, I do expect them to keep growing for many, many more years, even decades. So that's just something to put in perspective. If we look at their dividend, we will see here that, uh, you know, it's kind of misleading in a way, I'll explain, but it's at a low 0.72% dividend yield versus the market median of 287 now their uh, payout ratio is low to 28%. It's not as low as Ally Banks, but this is still low. Anything below like a 40% to me is a really good thing. And you'll see that they're still growing their dividend higher than the market median on that chart to the right. If we look at their dividend history, we will see that Costco has grown their dividend over the last year by 13.92% and the last five years at 12.47%. So nowhere near Ally's, but this is great. Anything to me over 10% is a big thumbs up in my book. So they're doing that, they're doing good. Um, now, what I would like to share though, which is why that last chart was misleading, is they do pay out special dividends. In fact, if we look at this here, it says the company has a history of issuing special dividends, surprise payouts that come once every few years. The last one was a $10 a share payout. Yes, $10 a share. And that was in November of 2020. Uh, the one before that was in 2017. So many say that they will probably pay one out this year. We will see. But if you include those high special dividend payouts, they actually get bumped up to about the average what the market median is. So that's something to keep in mind. And I think that's pretty cool. It's kind of a, a bonus, right? Out of nowhere that you get. Uh, so if we look at their, if they do stock buybacks, this company, yes they do, and it's actually increasing, unlike Ally that was kind of decreasing, but they do the buyback, so I give them a thumbs up, that is great. If we look at their fundamental analysis, we will see here that Costco is right in the middle, so very slightly overvalued. Of course, like I said, they are pricey, um, but I think this is right in the middle because they do consider its quality, which is why it's not like highly overvalued. Uh, so that's how I see that. Their quality is at 85. Yes, I agree with that. Their growth stability is at a 65 as well as their financial health. So towards the high end. So overall, it's great to see. Um, and then if we look at what the analysts score it, we will see here that they are in the bullish range at a 7.4 out of 10. Uh, so a lot of analysts definitely like Costco. So Costco, you know, great company. Um, I shop there often. I love going to Costco. I know that sounds weird, but I find a lot of great deals. I bought some shorts recently that at another store were twice the cost and I'm just like, wow, you know, this place really does save you a lot of money. Um, so let's look at the comparison that I have. And if we look here, we will see that uh, we're gonna go through these one at a time, but we have Ally in the first column and Costco in the second, and then the metrics in the very, very first column. But if we look at their PE ratio, trailing 12 months, Ally is definitely much, much cheaper to 4.36. Costco is pretty high there, almost 40. If we look at their earnings per share, the trailing 12 months versus the prior trailing 12 months, you know, Ally definitely has grown more at 36.71% versus Costco's 19.36%. Uh, so, you know, that's very impressive for Ally, but Costco's is also impressive, just obviously not as high, so Ally gets that one. Anything in green is kind of the winning column. The revenue trailing 12 months growth, uh, obviously Costco definitely takes it at a 16.56% versus Ally's barely growth at 0.33%. If we look at the revenue growth over the last five years, Costco takes it again at 10.54% versus Ally's 1.72%. The cash flow growth, Costco definitely wins here at 13.49% versus Ally's 5.10%. Now the dividend yield, uh, even considering Costco's special dividend, Ally still takes it at 3.45% because I think Costco comes in just shy of 3% if you factor in that special dividend. And the one year dividend growth rate, Ally definitely takes it. This is massive. They've grown it almost 58% where Costco's grown 13.92%, which is respectable but Allies is amazing and they do have that low payout ratio, which just shows you they have that room to really grow. Their payout ratio is at that 15% versus Costco's 28% in that next line. So Ally takes that. Now the debt to assets, uh, you know, again, financials, it's kind of misleading because they all are in that high range, but Costco's is lower technically. So at the 67.9%, 
So I will give it to them. The profit margin, Ally definitely has a higher profit margin, but I did explain that Costco's low profit margin isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I will give it to Ally. Um, they both do stock buyback, so I just said yes. Even though Costco's is increasing where Ally's is decreasing, uh, keep that in mind. Now the analyst score, they're definitely more bullish on Costco at a 7.4 out of 10 versus Ally's 5.6. Uh, now I added this in. Is this company company easily replicated? This is something I always think before I buy a company. Ally Bank, I feel, is. Uh, you know, you can have anybody, you know, kind of create a digital financial service platform. There's so many out there. And so I just think that's a risk with Ally where Costco, it's gonna be very hard to replicate this business. A lot of expenses go into it, just so many things do. So I do not think it is. So it gets the green mark here. Now, the future of these two companies. I think Ally is a six out of 10. I think they just have you know, a lot of risks, especially being heavy in the auto loans. Uh, they have, you know, it, it just is what it is. Where Costco, I believe, will be around the rest of my life and beyond. So I definitely give them a strong eight. Um, and I think it depends on how well they can grow globally. That's why I didn't rate them higher. But they take the cake there. So if we look at this, on the left, Ally has seven. On the right, Costco has eight in green. So Costco is the winner. And I just wanna say this, comparing them again. So Ally is cheaper, they pay the higher dividend, but they come with more risks. So that's something to consider. Costco is expensive, but you get quality and you get pretty much guaranteed future growth. And so for me, if I had to pick, that was comparing them on the, on the metrics and rating them there, I would also pick Costco because, as I said, they will be around longer than you and I probably watching this video, and they are not easily replicated. They're, they have a better future, in my opinion, than Ally Financial, and they have this global expansion opportunity that you know I think Costco can really be successful with. Um, but here in the U.S. and I believe Canada, it's just it's a massively uh, popular and successful business that I think we will see over the next two to three decades have great growth and I think this company will be around forever and so for that reason I pick Costco but I am still looking at Ally Financial as I said below 30 is where I'd buy especially in the $28 range I believe that adds me that level of safety and with their dividend and everything I just I think this is a good financial stock to add so I'm not saying I wouldn't buy it if I just had to choose between the two, Costco. Now, Costco, not too long ago, went down to the low 400s. In my head, I put a, a target at, as soon as it dipped below 400, I would buy. It never got there, so now it's back up to 500. But we'll see what happens. I want an opportunity to buy Costco, but I think they are highly priced, so I just would like to see it come down, maybe to that lower 400 or $300 range. So uh, with that said, that was a lot. I hope you like this comparison. Let me know which stock you would buy, Ally Financial or Costco. There's no right or wrong answer here, right? Every investor is different in the way they analyze things and their you know, future goals and everything. So Ally, I think for the dividend and the possible upside, because they are pretty cheap, is the way to go if you're thinking that route, where Costco is more of that long-term dependable stock that will have good growth and it's a quality company. And I am a long-term investor. Um, and they do grow their dividend, have those special dividends. So I still think they're, they're very attractive on that end too. But let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your opinion on these. Also, if there's any other companies you'd like me to put up against each other and compare, put that down in the comments. I'd lo I love to do these videos. I think it's fun. I'm very competitive, so I like to put companies up against each other. Uh, so with that said, guys, have a great day. Be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Mark Arnold's Finance.